Hey everyone, Liam here. So in today's video, I'm going to cover how we paint the purple fabric you can see on screen. And I've got some close ups for you, which I'll explain in a second, and also how we paint the white helmet. So the first thing to show, to note is the purple fabric. So you can see the model where it is at the moment on screen. The top right hand corner, you have a close up of what the fabric actually looks like. And then the bottom right of the screen is exactly the same photo. But I've turned the sharpness up to maximum with a filter. So that is not what the model looks like. But the reason why I'm showing it to you is because where I put the sharpness up, you can really see the texture that's actually in the model. Now, it's not real. It doesn't look like that, but it does go to show what the brush strokes are like. So the best thing that I can do with this is explain the process and then Kind of fast forward through showing you the footage and try and explain it as well as I can, but it's quite a simple process, so there's not a huge amount. And then the helmet, we're going for that nice smooth finish, and we'll go over that today as well. So, as always, if you like the video, if it's helpful, hit the like button, feel free to subscribe if you're new, and um, here we go. So, first up on the wet palette, top left, we have uh, black, I think it's scale 75 matte black, I'm not particularly sure, but it's black. Uh, the colour in the centre is a mix of Vallejo model colour violet and scale 75 ink intense purple, uh, ink intensity purple. Um, it's a 50-50 mix, so like we did previously, the whole point of the ink is to give it that really dark, deep purple. And the violet, the main thing is to give that ink some consistency. But the colour on the right, we've got Vallejo model colour icy yellow. Now, it might seem a bit strange to be using a yellow to highlight a purple, but what it's going to do is it's going to turn that purple gray. So it's going to make it into a very desaturated highlight. So the brighter that we go, the more gray it's going to get. And it kind of gives it like this worn, old feel to it. So the, the fabric itself, we're starting with a black base coat, and that's because we want the shadows to be really dark especially as this is in the lower half of the model and I don't want the lower half as bright as the top half. So I'm going to bring the picture I showed at the beginning up on screen. And this is the picture with the filter turning the sharpness up to maximum. So you can really see the marks in this paint. Now, as I said previously, it doesn't look like that in real life, but you can see the, the brush marks. So I'm using the combination of dots and very small scratch marks. So I'm using like sweeping brush strokes, really small ones, really fine. But the important thing to note here is actually they're very hard marks. If you do soft marks here, all you're gonna do is you're gonna get a really soft transition. You're gonna get a really nice smooth finish. You're gonna get something closer to what the armor looks like. You're gonna get a texture similar to, similar to the armor. And we don't want that in the slightest. We want a really worn, worn and torn look. So what that means is, is you don't want to be thinning this paint down very much at all. Uh, I think the purple, generally the mixes that I'm using at the moment, the, the paint is less than one part water, one part to to one part paint. So I'm I'm looking for really hard marks and I'm just building up lots of hard marks. I haven't got a lot of paint on my brush because if you have lots of paint on your brush, what, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have thick blobs of paint and you don't want that. You need to think of this as almost like scratching marks, scratchy marks. What you're going to do is you're just building up those marks and you're going brighter and brighter towards the places where you want the highlights. And you can see, again, I'll show the, the picture, the close-up picture up on screen. You can see how I've highlighted it generally towards the bottom, but also as at the, the peak of the folds. It is also worth noting if you're doing a different model with more folds, actually, depending on where your light's going, sometimes you need to highlight the inner folds so where the folds are out and you highlight the top edges that does make sense but sometimes folds you're you should be highlighting on the inside as well because that light's still going to catch it and you can already see where i've added this ice yellow to that purple it's it's turned it much it's it's, it's not as vibrant anymore it's going gray and the more yellow we add the more of that gray we're going to see um, so I'm going to speed up through a lot of this because there really isn't a huge amount to explain. Just have a look at how I'm using my brush. Remember, my paint is quite, not thick, but it's quite opaque. And it's leaving a very strong mark when I put my colors down. And that's, that's what it comes down to. It's just my brush stroke, my choice of dots and scratches, 
with a very opaque mark. Don't want thin paint here. Use thin paint, we're going to get a soft mark and you're going to end up getting a soft transition like the armor. We don't want that. You don't want all the textures to be the same. So remember when you're painting, the result you're getting is always a combination of your brush stroke and your paint consistency. Those are the two main things that matter. But I'll speed this up and then if there's anything else, if there's any questions that you have, obviously leave them in the comments and I'll answer. But this one is very, very straightforward. Scratches and dots. So you can see like that's the process it's basically transition from that purple keep adding the yellow until you get to the brightness that you're happy with and keep adding those dots and scratches if you do want to soften the marks that you've made if you just go over it with a really thin glaze so probably five or six parts water to one part of the purple go over the whole thing or over the mark that you've done and that will soften that mark but it really is that straightforward obviously the higher up on the model you probably go a little bit brighter on the highlight but that's it the wet palette is a bit of a mess here, but the bottom left we have blow model color gray blue. That's the bluey gray that you can see. And then the two colors next to it are a mix of the blow model color gray blue and blow model color pale gray blue. And then the color on the right, which I'm using now, is blow model color pale gray blue. Also, over the top of the wet palette, that mix of paint up there is the ivory velo model color ivory and then the you have low model color white next to that in that dollop so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we need to base coat the whole helmet with the velo model color pale gray blue the p3 coal black that we've laid down as a base coat that is too dark for what i want for this helmet but by putting the pale gray blue over it what it's going to do is it's going to darken the pale gray blue so straight away we already have a darker color than the base coat that we're using and it's also going to tint it with this nice green sickly tone which i really like so with the helmet i want a much smoother finish i want a much more refined finish than the rest of the model but at the same time i still don't want perfection so you can see i'm I'm building up a uh, with several coats I'm building up a nice flat layer but you can also see my brush is not my brush control is not not being very neat here I'm being very haphazard with my brush strokes and I'm, I'm, I'm doing it side to side I'm doing long sweeping strokes I'm stabbing it sometimes the reason for this is because what's going to happen is is when you build up those layers of paint as long as that paint is thin you're going to get a flat color now, with what I'm 
doing with that base coat because I'm being so messy with my brush strokes that's going to leave slight imperfections but nothing major nothing in comparison to say what we did with the fabric or what we did with the armor so it will look smooth it will look nice and neat but it won't be perfect at the same time you won't notice it unless you've got that model in your hand so for all intents and purposes it will have the helmet in itself will have a lot of contrast in textural value in comparison to everything else around it so straight away the texture on its own should make the helmet stand out and hopefully draw people's eye help to draw people's eye into the helmet as the focal point because that's a bit of a problem with this helmet with this model because we have no face it can be quite difficult to create that focal point now you can also see i'm jumping up to the ivory um, i'm jumping between the ivory and the pale gray blue and the idea here is and i'll i'll put something on screen to show exactly what i mean but we can basically break the helmet down into two sections. We have the collar, which is basically a flat surface or a, a, a diagonally highlighted surface or however you describe it. Then you have the top of the helmet, which is just all intents and purposes a sphere. So the top of the helmet, you would you, you highlight that curve like a sphere. So you'd have a ball of light, a reflection point on the top of it. And then you would have underneath it where you can already see that I've got some shadow. You would have a darker section just under here. And then that collar that comes out, that's almost like a completely you can you can effectively separate. Think of that as a separate piece that you need to highlight separately. That's going to be brighter because that's catching light. You just break down what you're painting into shapes. And you can see that on screen with my um, my terrible doodles. But I'm hoping that makes sense. My paint's also quite thin here. This is probably two or three parts water to one part paint generally. Um, you might not look it. I tend to, I, I've, I've got water on my thumb. And I, I, I mix a little bit of water and paint as I go on my thumb. So it's, it's a bit hard to show. But the idea here is, is if your paint is thin, your, it, it will just naturally blend a little bit easier when, you, when you're building up these coats. But you can see, as, as always, I'm not, I'm not being overly careful until the refinement stage. I'm just getting that rough color. I'm getting that rough transition. Do I like the way this looks? And you can already see, like normally I would never touch white until as a last resort. But the thing with this is, is I'm, I'm playing with that white, the Valero model color white. But first of all, because it's a transparent paint and because I'm thinning it, as soon as I put it over my previous color, it's not actually white. It's an off white. So we're not actually at white yet. If that makes sense. And also because I'm continuously working this paint and continuously building up these layers, I'm going to go over that white again. So all that white is going to do is say, for example, if I was to put the Vallejo model color pale gray blue over that white, it will give me a, a, a brighter version of that pale gray blue. <laughs> shameless plug time if you're enjoying the video if it's helpful feel free to check out my patreon there's an additional eight videos every month that come out on patreon for five pound a month i also twitch, uh, stream on twitch four times a week as well as there's a free discord channel if you want to get involved feel free to check out the links in the description and as always if you're interested in tuition or commissions get in contact with me ahead a little bit just because it's, it's just a lot of the same to be honest with you so i've got to the point where i'm happy with a rough transition and i'm happy with the, the shape of my shadows and highlights this is the bit that i don't normally do very much of but i need that smooth result which is why i'm going to do it so in this case you can see my wet palette is just a bit of a runny mess at the moment and the reason for that is is because basically i've added so much water to my paints this turned them into a glaze consistency normally i'd get a well palette for this 
um, just because it's, it's so much easier. But I haven't done that this time because there wasn't a huge amount to do. But the paints generally, the P3 Coal Black, when I use this, needs a bit more. It's probably seven or eight parts water to one part paint. But the, the lighter colors are generally probably five or six parts water to one part paint. If you're not familiar with, with glazing or you're not familiar with this sort of thing, then thinner your paint. The more layers of paint it's going to take, but the more control you have. So it's better to go thinner than too thick. Because the thicker you go, the stronger the mark you leave. But the idea here is I'm with the P3 Cold Black strengthening my shadow under the under the chin because I want that to be stronger because that's giving some nice shape to the helmet. And I'm also smoothing out any of the marks that I don't like. If there are any marks that are too hard. The glaze will soften them. But they won't make them disappear. Um, eventually, if you keep going over them with glazes, the marks will disappear. That's how you get a perfectly smooth blended finish. But I don't want that. I like the odd mark. Um, and then with the brighter colors, it's exactly the same again. The difference is with the brighter colors, I'm working from a dark area up to the light area because where you remove your brush, that's where you're going to have the most paint. But yeah, so this is this is a bit of a boring stage, which is why I don't like doing it. But we're back, we're effectively building up thin layers of paint to get a nice smooth transition and then we're going to move on to the vents and we're done right so this is a really interesting point so i've started painting in the shadows in the visor wasn't sure what i was going to do with these i was thinking about doing some glowing um some glowing lights originally but decided not to because the helmet's already really bright so it wouldn't have been the most effective thing to do and I kind of feel like this helmet has got the focal point now with the difference in the texture and the difference in how bright it is in comparison to everything else. I don't think it needs anything else. But I wanted to point out something that not many people talk about, and, and that's the, the flaws in their painting or their techniques or their processes. So for anyone who knows me or watches me paint a lot, know that I don't generally like painting really smoothly. I find it really tedious. I find it really boring. Um, and I avoid it at all costs, although I do, although I do it and I'm going to be doing, doing it for the channel to demonstrate a different type of painting. It's not my sort of thing, but everyone's painting processes and styles have downsides. And one of them for me is potentially the loss of detail. Now I always turn around and say, when I'm painting like this, I don't lose detail in the sculpt. Now it's not entirely true. What I mean when I say that is I don't lose detail in the sculpt that you will ever see because I'm, I'm, I'm too careful with it. I know that if I'm, if I'm putting puddles of paint into these vents, then I'm gonna lose that detail. So I make sure I don't do that or I pull out the excess paint. But what it can damage as such is potentially the cast or the sculpt. So, and this really showed up here on these vents. These Shade Spike models are actually amazing. The, the, the casts are really crisp and that means edge highlighting is incredibly easy. But with the way I paint, actually what I've done is a small amount of damage to this model. And the damage that I've done is the, the crisp edges that we have around those vents on the helmet. Those are not so crisp anymore just because I've been quite free with my brush strokes on it and my build up of paint. Now, to, if you were to look at this model, you would never see the damage that's done to those edges you would never see that they're not as crisp as they once were you would never see that there is an issue there but depending on how how sensitive you are to your own brush strokes you may feel it and i definitely felt it here so as soon as i run my brush along the edge of these vents i knew full well that i wasn't going to be getting a crisp line and you'll see me quite a lot when i do things like edge highlights i i don't always paint with the side of my brush and this is one of the reasons why because this is quite a common occurrence a common issue that i have um and it can be mitigated if i was just more careful but i don't enjoy i don't i don't enjoy being that finicky about things so i've just learned to deal with it in my own way and my own way of dealing with it is i paint my edge highlight lines as opposed to catching the edge of the model so it's something to bear in mind with this when you're painting and i do recommend you paint in the way that you enjoy not the way people tell you 
regardless of it's me telling you or regardless whether it's someone else, you need to find, you need to be taking away the processes that work for other people and take away only what works for you because no one is ever right. It's only that's what works for them. You need to find what works for you and what you enjoy because there's no point just copying other people blindly without you you understanding or developing what you like yourself because it will eventually just become boring at first when you're when you're very very early on it's definitely worth copying other artists because that's how you learn that's how you grow that's how you start to understand the sorts of things you like but there becomes a point where you have to start going oh do you know what i don't like that it doesn't matter who's painting it you need to be able to go no i'm not a fan of that process um and, and I'm quite happy for, for me. Andy Wardle is an amazing painter and I follow him. I love his work. But the process that he takes for painting, it's very smooth. It's very controlled. It's very methodical. That's not for me. Now, that in, in, is in no way takes away from the result he gets because he's, he is one of the best in the UK for a reason. But his process of painting, I find quite tedious, which is why I don't do it very often. But it's a perfect example of someone who is that good, but there's very little that I personally take away from his paint style. It's just something to bear in mind. How you paint needs to be entirely based on the way you enjoy painting. And the way you enjoy painting could potentially have repercussions. And this is one of them for mine. Sometimes I potentially lose the crispness of an edge to the detriment of the actual paint job. So I have to make up for that by being able to paint nice crisp lines when I need to. Right, so that's the model as it stands. As you can tell, the helmet's looking nice and smooth. Combination of the brightness of the helmet being obviously white. Um, and with the textural difference between the helmet and the rest of the model, it's starting to stand out and it does draw the eye. So I'm happy with that. The texture in the fabric is really cool. I'm happy. Uh, it doesn't stand out very much. I've kept it quite muted. And if you notice, there's not a huge amount of contrast in light and dark on the fabric. Not everything needs to go from black and white try to keep that quite dark because I don't want it to stand out at all. But as always, let me know what you think.